you hear about pollution a lot. It's bad for the earth, we need to get rid of it, and we need to make less of it. So what exactly is pollution, and how much of it is actually out there? Atmospheric pollution is the gases, dust, fumes, smoke, and odors that get into the air. It comes from a lot of places, too. Pollution comes from factories, from offices, and from houses. It comes from the tailpipes of cars and the tailpipes of cows, and goes into the atmosphere. You see, the atmosphere is like this big blanket of various gases that cover the entire planet. It keeps the sun from toasting everything on Earth, but it also holds enough heat from the sun to keep us from freezing. It's a nice little balance we got going on. When some types of pollution get into the atmosphere, they throw off that natural balance. Changes to that natural balance can cause accelerated harm to humans and other animals and also plants on Earth. Scientists, or people who study nature and also human activity, are particularly worried about a pollutant called carbon dioxide, or CO2. There's naturally some CO2 in the atmosphere already. In fact, every time you breathe out, you're breathing out carbon dioxide. But it's okay. That's what plants are for. Plants have the ability to convert CO2 into oxygen, which we need to live, so that's pretty cool. But we're not the only ones that put out CO2. Remember all those sources of pollution? They're almost all sources of CO2. Too much carbon dioxide means the planet could get too hot. And here's another problem. There's more CO2 in some places than others. Cities have a lot of it. Even certain neighborhoods in cities have more than others. So how do you measure how much CO2 is out there? You ask a particular type of scientist. A chemist. This chemist. Alexis Schusterman studies at the University of California, Berkeley. She uses a special tool called a beacon. CO2 in the air kind of sneaks into the sensor through these little holes on the sides. And inside the sensor, there's this tiny beam of light. And the more CO2 there is in the air, the more that light gets blocked out. And so the brightness of the light tells me how much CO2 there is in the air. Alexis and her classmates then get to climb on top of roofs and balconies all around the San Francisco area to install sensors in this beacon network. We go all over the city and there's just this little hardware on the back of the nodes and we attach that hardware to a pipe or to a railing or whatever we find and we cinch it down nice and tight and then all we have to do is plug it in like a regular wall power outlet and then it uses the cell towers around the city to send the data to me wirelessly in my office. So no matter where I am, as long as there's cell phone service, I can get the data from my sensors. Using these results, she can map just how much CO2 is in any area and help those neighborhoods reduce their carbon dioxide output. So having Beacon means that neighborhoods and cities can make better, higher definition maps of CO2 in their area. But with a Beacon map, you can see the individual highways and freeways where CO2 is the worst. And so when you see something like that as a community member, you might say, maybe I'll take a different route to school today, or maybe I won't go for a drive tomorrow. And so Beacon is giving communities the knowledge that they need to start reducing their CO2 pollution production. So as you celebrate Earth Day, think about pollution and the chemists out there tracking it. Someday, their work could help us get rid of it. <laughs>